Welcome to Chapter 7 of Matrix Games World in Flames training videos. This chapter covers starting a new game and setting up units. The screen that you're looking at now should be familiar since it's the opening screen and I'm going to click on start a new game. There are five steps to starting a new game and the first one is set mode and play. Once you have done this, then the second step appears. So for now, let's say we're going to play over the internet. And I'll click Mode OK. Here's the second step, selecting a scenario. Barbarossa is the default scenario. It is strongly recommended that you start by playing Barbarossa. Guadalcanal is another one that is only five turns long. It focuses on naval combat. Fascist Tide is a half-map scenario. Day of Infamy, a half-map scenario. Miss the Bus is the scenario that I'm going to use here. It takes place starting in July-August of 1940, and it runs through to the end of the war, 31 turns. The idea behind this scenario is that you're starting after France has already fallen, and Germany has a decision about whether it wants to go to England, Gibraltar, down in the Balkans, as it did historically, or turn immediately to Russia. You just click on Scenario OK, and it brings up the third step, which is selecting optional rules. There are a lot of optional rules, and they're broken up into different tabs. Additional units, and you can see them all listed here. Land rules, not so many. Air rules, quite a few optional air rules. Naval rules has a few odd ducks. Supply rules, a few optional rules related to supply, a few related to production, and a few miscellaneous rules such as intelligence and USSR, Japan, compulsory peace. If we go back to additional units, which is the first one that comes up, you can select any one of these or all of these or any mixture that you so desire. Just clicking on this means the territorials is going to be part of the optional rules. If you don't understand what territorials optional rule means, you right click on it and a text description of that optional rule comes up. This is taken pretty much from uh, rules as written and rules as coded. It's also in section 9 of the player's manual. Artillery is quite complex. It has three pages here. Rather than force you as a new player to go through all of these 80 rules and decide which ones to use, we have created some default sets of optional rules. For instance, if you click on Novice Set, then only a few optional rules are turned on. Chinese Warlords, Partisans, Siberians, Offensive Chits. Under Land Rules, we have Motorized Movement Rates and the Blitz Bonus. We're using flying boats, but we're leaving out most of the optional rules with air units. We're leaving out all of the optional naval units and supply rules. We are enabling saving oil resources and build points and off-city reinforcements in the additional Chinese cities. So that's all the optional rules that are part of the novice set. If you go to the standard set, which is what most players who are experienced with World in Flames would use, more optional rules are turned on. For instance, we're now using divisions and ski units. We're using combat engineers and pilots and carrier planes. We aren't using cruisers and flames, and we're not using convoys and flames. Both of these add quite a few units to the uh, units in the game. And the advanced set is for people who uh, want to turn on pretty much everything. What Optional rules are in each of these sets were decided by various experienced players. And you can feel free to modify them if you want. I would advise that if you have a personal set that you want, then you should save it down here using this button. You could, for instance, take the advanced set and say turn off cruisers and flames. Click on save as personal set. And now if we go back to, say, turning all of the optional rules off, and I click on Personal Set, 
I'm going to get the same thing as the advanced set, but Cruisers and Flames is turned off. For the personal set is a convenience for you. Set the optional rules the way you like them, save it as personal set, and every time you start a new game you just have one button to click on, personal set, and you're done. You can also save multiple copies of optional rules. So you could have five or ten different sets that you like and save them under different names and restore them whenever you desire. I'm just going to go to advanced set and I'm going to click on optional rules OK. This brings up the fourth panel, fourth step, which is just to name the players. And because I am playing by internet, I need to enter at least two names. So I'm going to go with Erwin for the Axis, and I'm going to go with James for the Allied players. When you click Names OK, it brings up the fifth set, which is to assign who plays what major powers. So Erwin, in this case, has been assigned Germany, Italy, Japan, and Vichy, France, and James is playing all five of the Allied major powers. You could change this. You could switch them back and forth. The 9 and the 58 are the victory conditions. Erwin is going to need to hold on to 9 victory cities, objective cities, whereas James, playing the Allied side by the end of the war, needs to have 58. As soon as I have this assignment of major power groups done, I can click on Major Powers OK you can go back and change your optional rules. If you do that, then you should click on the following of buttons, the names OK and the major powers OK. This screen introduces the colors for the countries, the German flag in the gray background, the US flag with the green, the USSR with its brown, the Chinese with its yellow, French with its pale blue, the Commonwealth with its darker blue, the flags in this case are just part of the picture. They don't actually accomplish anything. So now I'll just click on Major Powers OK and the new game will start. I've skipped ahead to the point where Germany is setting up their units. As you can see, the USSR has already set up their major powers and the Italians have as well. The French have not the Commonwealth has not. The United States, you will see that they have set up. China, you will see that the Japanese and the Chinese have both already set up all their units. So we're at the point in the game where the Germans need to set up their units. Germany has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different setup locations and the units that go in each of these setup locations are quite distinct. The ones that can set up here in Poland and East Prussia are these five land units, there are no air units, and there's also no naval units. If you go to the second setup location, Germany and Austria, then there are five air units that can set up anywhere within Germany and Austria and there are a lot of land units including three forts, some oil points, four oil points, several garrison units, a paratrooper, and some decent infantry like this 8-3 elite unit and a 6-4 elite unit. In Norway and Denmark they have just one air unit, a naval air unit, a mountain unit, and a garrison. There are again no naval in Belgium, the Netherlands, and occupied France, not Vichy France, they have a lot of occupying forces. And in fact, what we have here are the units that just defeated France, that just occupied Paris. So there are three headquarters units, including an armor. There are a whole lot of armor units and artillery units, and a ton of airplanes. Down in Vichy, France, we have a couple Vichy units to set up. And there are also some naval units. So when I click on this, the land unit panel is going to change to naval units. 
and as you can see there are a dozen or so Vichy French naval units including nine convoys and a couple of submarines. In Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia there's one Vichy France unit for the German player to set up. Germany controls Vichy France so it's setting up the Vichy French units. In Syria there's one Vichy French unit and in Hanoi there is one naval unit to set up. Setting up a unit is pretty easy. You just click on the unit. This one's already ready to go. When I click on it, it says it's in stack, which means that it's part of the units in hand. And as I move it around, there's an error message up here that's saying you must place the units in Hanoi. No options on this unit. You just place it in Hanoi. And you'll notice that the cursor turns to a crosshair. Over here it's an X. You can't do it. Here it's a crosshair and if you look up at the top you'll see that it's okay to set up. As soon as I place it in Hanoi that'll be the last unit for this setup location and the program's going to jump to the first setup location again which is Poland and East Prussia. In Syria there's this one land unit. I click on it it becomes in stack. I can place it anywhere in Syria. You can see that the crosshairs are good as soon as I go outside of Syria, I get the warning message that, no, 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 place this unit in Syria. We need to worry a little bit about being invaded, so being on the coast would be good. Holding the major port in Beirut would be good. The other concern is that maybe the Commonwealth will be coming in and attacking out of Transjordan and uh, Palestine. Remember, the Commonwealth haven't set up their units yet, so we don't know what's going to be down here but still placing the unit in Beirut seems best. We've once again gone back to Poland and East Prussia. I'm going to set up Vichy France next. Vichy France is defined by this border but if I turn on the flags it's easier to see that this is Vichy France. If I jump the zoom level up to 8 you'll see that the flag for Vichy France is the French colors with a little uh, symbol in the center. That's also shown up here and the uh, Free French flag is this symbol. And though it might be tempting to control Vichy, put a unit in the capital to make sure you don't lose it, in reality the Germans occupy all the rest of occupied France so the only real threat here is going to be in from the coast. So we're going to put the uh, the better unit, the 6-3 in Marseille, and we're going to put the weaker non-elite unit in Toulon. It has double the strength there, so this is essentially a 6-3 on defense, and this is a 6-3 all the time. They're going to both be in a uh, ports, major ports. For the Vichy French units, I'm just going to select a whole bunch of these and place them in Marseille and I'll do the same here. I'm not going to be able to set units up at sea because Vichy France is neutral but just to, for convenience sake I'm going to put the submarines in Toulon. Now I can put the convoys out at sea and that's because convoys are not combat troops so you're allowed to set up the convoys however you like. This is nine convoy points. What I'd like to do is split that so I'm going to click on it, right click, bring up this pop-up menu and under naval units it gives me the option to split them. This brings up the little split panel and I have nine to split. I could put four in each new unit and create one new unit. So this would take four away from the nine. It would leave me a four and a five. But if I change this to, say, three, and I create two new units, I'm going to get three units, all of which are three. And just click OK on this, and here are my three convoy points. You can merge them in a similar manner. So splitting and merging convoy points, these are like money. You can do this however you like. So I'm going to pick this up 
it has to go in the zero box and no matter where I drop it here it's going to go into the zero box for the axis side. I'll take another three of these and put them in Marseille for future use and I'll also take another three and I'll put them over and say uh, Toulon. Norway and Denmark they just had a, a few units so I'll set them up next. We'll take the nav air. This is a boat so the problem with boats is that they cannot go inland. They have to go somewhere on a coast. Frederikshaven. The advantage of putting it here is that it has a, a range of one to go to the Baltic and a range of one to go to the North Sea. Problem is that it's then out of supply because it's too far. One, two, three, four, five from Copenhagen. So let's pick it up and drop it here. Now it can reach supply in Copenhagen. In fact, it's within four of Kiel, so it can reach supply from Kiel. It's a little bit farther. I'm going to try to find a better hex for this. Now it's within two of reaching the Baltic and within two of reaching the North Sea. So that's not a bad place. I am worried about losing Oslo, so I'm going to put a garrison unit there. And I'm also worried about losing this uh, resource point, molybdium. Just That's just for your edification. And we'll put this unit on the coast. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia has one, count them one, unit to set up. If we go back out to zoom level three, here's my choice. I can place it in Rabat or down here in Casablanca. This is controlled by Spain, so it can't go there, but it can go anywhere along the Algier, or it could go over here in Tunis. Historically, the threats were from the Cape St. Vincent. This is still early in the game, so I think my paranoia is more for defending Algiers. I guess I'm ready to set up the Poland and East Prussia units. I'll go back out to zoom level, say, 5. And I'm going to turn off the flags because they're cluttering up the map. What you might notice here is that there's a sensitivity bar on the side of the detailed map. When I place the cursor there it scrolls in that direction. So when I place it here it scrolls in that direction. This means that I don't have to try scrolling it using the up and down arrow keys. They still work but it requires another hand. The other thing you can scroll with is the mouse wheel. So if I scroll down or I scroll up with the wheel that works. The other possibility is to use the panel down here. If you click on the right, it scrolls to the right and to the left. If, if you click anywhere between the button and the edge, it scrolls one screen width and one screen width back, brings us back to Berlin. You can also slide the button. Uh, the weird thing about this is the button doesn't move. You grab it and you slide it and lo and behold the button is just where it was before. What's happening is this is a wraparound and because it's a wraparound you don't have any right edge or left edge so wherever you are on the map you're in the middle. The vertical scroll bar doesn't work like that so if I click on this button it's going to get the map views out of my way and I click on it again the map views are back so this is just a roll up roll down button. What you can do here is you can actually grab and move the slide bar and this actually slides the map up and down vertically so we're over in Halifax now. Let's go back to Poland East Russia. One way of doing that is to click on a location and the setup locations automatically center on the setup location. So Germany, Austria is going to not move because we're already on Berlin. But the Belgium, Netherlands is going to center on Paris. And now if I go back to Germany, Austria, it centers on Berlin. But the East Prussia doesn't move because the centering hex for East Prussia is already there. I'll scroll over a little bit. I want to do just a little bit more with scrolling 
and that is that you can scroll left and right using the wheel and what I'm doing here is I'm holding down the shift key so now instead of scrolling up it scrolls to the left holding down the shift key and using the mouse wheel you can scroll to the right so you can scroll up and down without the shift key and you can scroll left and right with the shift key so the mouse wheel will let you scroll quickly any direction you want it's a little faster than the placing the cursor over here while we're discussing this why don't I go up and look at the player interface I didn't cover this as a drop-down menu these are all the different things that you can do for controlling how the game behaves automatically cycling to the next unit switching the meaning of left click and control left click which is a uh, fairly obscure you can also disable uh, combat air phase which is a sub phase within all the air missions you can do that by major power and by phase so you could go to China and say that you do not want to use cap in China which is combat air patrol for port attacks because China doesn't have any ships so they're not going to be port attacked you could say that you don't want to do it against uh, air transports or against air reorganization and you just click on OK done and now China has those settings in general the default is for cap to be used in all places but you can control it with this menu likewise you can disable entire phases so again China doesn't do port attacks they don't go out to sea so they're not going to be doing naval air and it's doubtful that they're going to do emergency headquarters supply so you have some control over the game sequence of play the default is all the sub phases and phases are done but if you find some of those tedious to click through then you can control it here you can show the die rolls if you're interested in seeing what the numbers are you can automatically save the game and after every phase you can confirm end of phases and so on the one that I was doing was auto scroll sensitivity if you set this to zero the little panel here on the side will disappear it will give you more of the map visible and if you set it to high then it, it's very sensitive and will start scrolling as soon as the cursor gets there I like the uh, sensitivity to be around too here's also the ability to turn on and off the historical videos the sound a blinking end of phase button and so on getting back to setting up the German units in Poland and East Prussia the objective here is to position these units so that you can attack Russia later there's a pretty long border here I'll turn the flags on so you can see the border there's East Prussia and there's Poland so the USSR is defending Lvov is a fairly important point it's a city which has good defense they're defending Brest Litovsk with an actual unit they have some units out in the swamps for emergency deployment you can understand what these two units are by double clicking on any empty hex when you do that it activates the flyouts and the flyouts let you see that these two units our headquarters and and divisional infantry there are two for this hex most of the hexes only have one unit. So there aren't that many Russian units in the game if you go up here to Leningrad there are three ships deployed but no land units so let's figure out where we're going to put these I'm going to turn off the flyouts and I do that by double clicking on an empty hex so the double click on an empty hex turns them on and turns them off here's the East Prussia that's pretty important this is a supply city for the Germans because it's a home city and Memel is very nice city to have in fact it was, historically it was a controversy uh, Germany did acquire Memel and that enables them to penetrate rather quickly around the USSR here so let's put a unit that can actually move up there 
we'll take the 5-4 infantry. We'll put somebody strong in the front here to defend Warsaw. Uh, we'll just take a simple garrison unit. What I'm doing is I'm creating a line of zones of control. I'll put the really nice mechanized unit down here as a threat to potentially go one, two, three, four, five and overrun the USSR air unit. And uh, we'll just add one more unit, this militia unit, and I'll put it up here out in the edge. That was the last of those, so we've jumped again, once again, to Germany, Austria. These are setting up in the homeland, and as usual, I like to start with the easiest units to set up, the ones that are easiest to decide. I'm going to take oil points, one, two, put a couple of them in Berlin, and just for balance, I'm going to take another two and put them down in Munich. It's not real crucial where the oil points go. The forts are interesting. Historically, Germany set up a bunch of forts along the Maginot Line uh, called the West Wall to defend against the French. But at this point in the game, there's no need for them. France has already been conquered. Uh, we could put them over in here in uh, the Rhineland and along this, the Rhine River border. Uh, that would be if we were worried about the Commonwealth and the United States uh, invading. But it's 1940. Those invasions aren't going to happen until 43 or 44. What is a threat is that the Commonwealth might try to invade Kiel and Bremen. So I'm going to set the forts up there. I'm going to pick up one of the forts and I'm going to defend Bremen. Now when I click on the hex, it lets me place the fort on one of the six hex sides. So I can place it facing this hex side zero and so on. In reality, I'm worried about an invasion in the hex adjacent to Bremen and then an overland attack. So I'm going to put it in hex zero. And when I click on this, the fort is still displayed this way, but if you look underneath, you'll see the icon for the fort. Turning off the units and turning off the names you can now see that the fort is defending Bremen from an attack from the west. Put back the names and put back the units. During the setup phase you can freely move units. So we could take this oil unit and put it in Madgeburg or we can take it back and put it there. We could pick up the fort and place it somewhere else. I'm a little bored with doing that. I'm going to put another fort in here and I'm going to have it on hex side 1. Now I have a pretty strong defense against the British landing here. If the British do come in from the North Sea through the Helgoland Bight and land a unit here, any units that I deploy behind the lines are going to be defended by a fort. Uh, likewise, I'm going to take and put one here in Kiel. I'm going to have it on hex side 0 and now I've got a, a defense against units landing in these two hexes. If the Commonwealth does an invasion and puts a unit here, they're not going to be able to attack Bremen because it's an all-sea hexide. I could have put all three forts in one hex. This was totally under my control. I'm going to take the best of the garrison units and place it in Bremen. I'm going to take the next best and place it in Berlin, Paranoia Against Parachute Drops. I'm going to place another one in Kiel. I have a decision to make about the paratrooper and its air transport. I want to stack these together with the threat of maybe doing a paradrop. Now, if I place them here, I am 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from Harwich. So I could actually threaten to invade Harwich by placing them both here. Any other place, one, two, three, four, five, the air transport unit's not going to be able to reach. So just for chuckles, 
why don't we place the paratrooper there and give it the air transport and that's a threat on Harwich. When the Commonwealth sets up they're probably going to worry about that. I have a strategic bomber here with a range of 10 but if I select this unit I'm not going to be able to get the strategic bomber with the range of 6 extended. What's going on is that there are two of these units drawn from the force pool but I only have one pilot for them and so by clicking on one of these I'm going to lose the other one which will go into the air reserve. So I think of these two planes though this one has the better range I'm going to take the JU-88 and that's because it has a really nice ground strike capability tactical and it has a fairly substantial air-to-air -air defense and the range of six is probably enough for me to reach things that I want to bomb. Now as soon as I clicked on it it says that's the last slot for the L3s selecting this the others move to the air reserve so I say fine and now it's ready I'll put it in Essen for now I'll probably rebase it farther west and that would enable me to if I got it down in Belgium somewhere I could start threatening factories in Sheffield and Manchester and Birmingham and Coventry and so on make the Commonwealth deploy their defensive fighters over a wider range of territory. Got a couple militia units here that aren't very good. I'm going to deploy one of these in this fort. And my idea here is I have a little defensive line. But most of these units, what I'm going to want to do with them, because they're so weak, is I'm going to want to move them into the Netherlands and Belgium for a garrison and prevent uh, partisans from arriving. So I'll put one of them here and in a future turn I'm going to move it. But the others, I'm going to put them over here. Now I can't deploy them inside of Poland. So if I take this 8-3, I'm told no, you can't go there. It has to be in Germany. But what I can do is I can place it right on the border and place another one right on the edge. And I can run these units into Poland at my first opportunity. I'll take a couple of these 6-4s put them down here and I'll take the 4-4 four, four. because I've deployed all of the land units I now get to look at the naval units I could have gone to the naval units first by clicking on a button now Germany has a fairly nice navy but the problem is the uh, Commonwealth has a much better one so for now I'm just going to place them all in Stettin click on these units, place them in Staten. I can control what units are visible by clicking on these buttons. So if I click on subs, all the other units are temporarily removed and it filters down to just the subs. The submarines are a real threat to the Commonwealth supply line, so I'm going to put them in keel with the idea of moving them out and attacking with them. I've got a transport here. I think what I'll do is I'll take the transport, put it in queue, and I'm going to bring this 4-4 back too. It gives a, a very minor threat of picking up the 4-4 with the transport. Here I'll use the flyouts, double click. So what I'm threatening is to take the transport, put the 4-4 on it, and use it for an invasion somewhere. Let's pick up the CX. These are the auxiliary cruisers they are extremely fast you can see that they all have six some of them have sevens and eights so these can go out and do attacks on the convoys as well I can't put them in Bremen because Bremen's a minor port and I've got too many ships in this stack that I just picked up I've got one two three four five six of them so I'll put them in Hamburg and I'll take the couple light cruisers I've got left, put them with the other light cruisers. So if I want to see what these 13 units are, double click, brings them up. That's the first nine. When I click down here, it shows me the other four. The flyouts will show a maximum of nine units at a time. And double click gets rid of those. I'm going to take the convoys, put them out in the Baltic. Now 11 is way too many. So what I can do is split these. I want to leave 
three convoys here for bringing in the resources from Sweden. There's also a resource from Norway and one from Finland. So I'm going to take five. That's fine. These are in sentry mode, which is what the symbol means there. So I want to turn that off. I'll right click, unselect sentry mode. I'm going to take these six and I'm going to place them down in Stettin as a reserve. So I've got five convoys out here to handle the resources coming in. There was the molybdium from uh, Norway and there are these three resource points up here and going out through this road there's a resource point coming in from Petsamo. Notice that the railroad turns to a road. This is one of the very few roads on the map. So let's go back to the last two units that I have set up but I actually only have one and the reason is I only have one pilot for these two F2 fighters. The two means that it costs two build points. Of these two fighters, clearly the six, four is better, better range, better air to air. We pick up that unit. That's fine. And I'm going, now that it's ready, I'm going to select it. I'm going to place it in Madgeburg. And what I'm trying to do here, provide some fighter cover for these units and also for Berlin and the various oil and resource points around here. So we're left with the big guys. We've got a ton of units sitting out in France from having just done that. Let's break these down using the filters. So if we look at just the fighters, we have six fighters. One tooth of them are F3s, cost three build points. I can choose one of these. Of the 3-4 and the 4-4, I clearly take the 4-4. I'll bring this guy down in here and he's going to provide fighter cover for this area. Of the remaining fighters, I have three to select out of five. Of the five two build point fighters that are remaining, I can choose three. And clearly the guys that are six air to air are to be preferred. As I click on these the number changes. Now I have one out of three remaining to choose. If I control click on one of these, it goes back to its previous status and now I can select two. I definitely want this six. And of the five, this is a air to air of five and a tactical of two, which makes it marginally better than this air to air of five tactical one. The ranges are the same. So I'll click on this one. It tells me that you have selected the last one. Please confirm, and I do. I'm going to leave one of these fighters over here to defend Paris, but the other fighters I'm going to place over here in Strasbourg. And I'm going to place them as far to the east as possible because I want to rebase them eventually over into Poland for my attack on the USSR. We're left with more planes going back to the center point Paris. We are left with four L2s, and we choose three of those, and we're left with uh, six L3s, and we get to choose four of those. Now for L2s, these are tacticals, and what we're really concerned about is the number in the lower left, which is its ability to do tactical bombing. So we want the six, we want the five, and we want the five. And for the L3s, we could go for the strategic bombing, but what we really would like is more tactical because that's going to be important when we attack the USSR. So I'm going to go with the four and the four. I'm just looking at this lower right number. Now I've got a bunch of them which are not very attractive. So I think I'll take the two threes that have extended range. And now I have a bunch of air units that I can use for attacking either England or going into the USSR. This guy has a strategic bombing factor of four, so I'm going to make as if I'm going to use him for attacking England. And I'll also take the his similar plane and place that one here as well. So I have a little bit of a threat strategically. The other planes I'm going to deploy for sending to the east. 
I can't stack more than three units in a hex, air units in a hex, if it's a city. If I take two, I can't place them in an empty hex. That's a hex without any city. But I can place them in Mets. And I'll place the other one in Mets. This guy has an extended range, so he should be able to get over to the west pretty fast. That does the air units. For the land units, why don't we just look at the headquarters? We've got a really nice armored unit. We really want him to be heading east. We've got another nice one that we want to head east. The question remains what to do with von Lieb. We could leave him over here in France to defend against possible attacks from the Commonwealth, but they're really weak at this point in time. So let's get him geared up for going over to the west as well. And now armor. We definitely want the uh, armor heading over to the west. So I'll pick up the three units that can move six, place them here, take the two units that can move five. I already have too many units in this hex, so I'll just put them here and I'll dump them one at a time in those hexes. So a quick review shows us that we've got a couple of armored units, one is a headquarters, a headquarters and a mech, and so on. And these units are all geared up to head off. I can stack three in this hex because one of them's a division. So I can pick up these other divisions and fill out these hexes, maximum capacity. I've got another division I can place over there. I also have artillery units. Why don't we just filter down to the artillery. We're likely to receive some attacks on Paris. It has a factory, it has a red factory that the Germans are going to be able to use. So I'm going to use this uh, heavy anti-aircraft unit as a defender of Paris and at the same time it's going to be able to defend from uh, strategic bombing attacks. But the other guys are all going to go over to the eastern front. So I'll place this one in Brussels. Remember that the setup here is Belgium, Netherlands, occupied France. I'm going to take these and I'm just going to put these in cities and the idea is that I'm going to move them by rail. So we've almost got everybody deployed. I'll just dump these guys around put a garrison unit in uh, Brussels for permanent status there. Take another militia unit and put them in Amsterdam, permanent status. Uh, the rest of these are pretty good. But let's take a 5-3 and put them out in Brest. We might want to put some submarines there sometime and it'd be nice to have that hex defended. And we should defend this border hex here because a marine unit could cross over here and invade so we should have somebody in this hex. The rest of them are probably all going to go east, so I'll just pick them up two at a time and put them over here. These guys are going to walk. In fact, why don't we deploy them down here, which is a little bit shorter distance to walk. And take the last two units and drop them on a city someplace. I might rail move those guys. That concludes it. When I've moved the last of the units from the setup tray, the setup tray disappears. I still have the option of redeploying these guys, so I can pick them up and put them in some other hex, whatever I feel like. Once I've got the setup the way I want, I click on this button. Done setting up Germany, yes. And now it cycles to the next major power that needs to set up, which in this case is the Commonwealth. And here we are at the Commonwealth setting up their units. They have a couple more locations where they can set up units, including one that says anywhere, which means that it can set up anywhere on the map where the Commonwealth has control. So they have a couple submarines that can set up anywhere, and they have a, a number of transports and also convoys. The convoys are numerous for the Commonwealth. Look at all of these. And they've been broken down into sizes 888, 555, instead of one monolithic one, which I think would be 81 if I remember correctly. The idea here is that you 
would probably deploy them in these sizes in the different sea areas in order to get resources back. There are a couple things that I want to show here. I'm not going to set up all the Commonwealth, but I would like to show setup rules. If you click on this, it tells you the particular rules that apply just for the setup. In this case, Miss the Bus doesn't know what the weather is going to be like at the beginning of the turn. There's going to be a die roll to figure that out. So there's a button down here that lets you set the weather. This one here, set weather and you get the die roll to be whatever you like. So you could make it an 8 and you also have a modifier and now the weather is storm in the north monsoon. So if we go out to the global map and look at the weather you'll see that there's storm throughout the north monsoon. We can jump to that location and turn on the weather overlays and you'll see the effect of storm. We could also jump to Japan which is having fine weather or go down to the Philippines which is uh, experiencing some kind of a monsoon. You have control of the weather but it's only temporary. As soon as the turn officially begins the computer will roll for the weather. But we could go down here and see what the different weather effects might be. We could look to see what a one would produce and that's going to give us fine weather everywhere. They have an awful lot of naval units and they've got one, two, three, four, five carriers. Why don't we do it this way? They've got five carriers. They have this many battleships, which I guess is around a dozen. They have a whole lot of heavy cruisers. They're all ready for deployment and for light cruisers they have a number of those as well. The Commonwealth is at war and because they're at war they're going to be able to deploy naval units in the sea boxes. We go look at Australia there's just one unit. Burma India has a couple, Malaya has one, Netherlands East Indies has a couple one of which is a territorial. In the Western Pacific they have a oil unit to set up but they also have naval units quite a few of those including a carrier this is probably the Singapore group and then in under anywhere they have a number of carrier air units to put deploy they've got nine and they choose six of them you want to choose the carrier air units so they match the carriers so if you go back here and look at just the carriers you would like to get a carrier air unit of 3, 2, 2, 1, and 1. So for instance, let's take this 3, put them in Plymouth, and then we'll go back to the Anywhere, and we'll select this carrier air unit with a class of 3. We'll put it in the same hex, and when we do that, we get a question, do we want to set it up on the carrier? And yes, we do. We have the choice of just deploying it in the hex, not actually aboard the carrier. But the whole purpose here is to put it on the carrier. We've got two type 2. I'm going to pick up both of those and put those in uh, Plymouth and take the two type 1s and put them in say Hull. Now I'll go back to the carrier airplanes. I've only got one type 2 so I'll pick that up and put that on, oh I don't know, say the Furious. You can see the Furious, the little status indicator means that it has a carrier airplane and the status indicator next to the carrier airplane means that it is on a carrier. The illustrious does not have any carrier air unit yet. But I'll give it one of the give it one of the type ones. And now I've still got three to choose. I've got two carriers that do not have carrier air units, so I'll pick up a couple of these. I'll take the two two and the three one. Now, as you might have noticed, there are a ton of naval units for the Commonwealth to deploy. And the convoys in particular are going to need to be spread out throughout the world. Right now, there are no convoys at all. The, notice that the scrolling also works on the global map. 
So the Commonwealth is going to need to deploy convoys throughout the world in order to bring resources from Canada, the South America, Australia, India, back into the factories that are sitting in London, Newcastle, Leeds, Manchester, Liverpool, Sheffield. Rather than having to do this each time, what we've done is we have enabled you to save a setup and restore it. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to restore a setup. I'm going to steal the setup from Global War. And what you might have noticed is a whole lot of these ships disappeared from the setup tray. And what's happened to them is they've been deployed on the map. So when I go back to the global map now, the entire Commonwealth deployment of convoys have been set up. You can modify these at this point and save your own setup. You can use the defaults when you first start playing the game. The ships have also been redeployed. I'm going to double click, go back to the United Kingdom. I'm going to double click on a sea hex, not a land hex. Land hex double click brings up the flyouts. But a sea hex double click, move the cursor over a port, and have a breakout of all the units that are within that port. You can see that there's the Argus which has a air unit deployed on it. This entire column is battleships. This is the entire column of cruisers. If we go over to Plymouth it updates and shows us that there's one unit deployed on the Illustrious. If we go up here we see one deployed on the Eagle. Besides getting the breakdown for an individual hex we can also look at a summary and the Naval Summary page. So what's happened here is the Naval Review Summary shows you all the ports that the British have units in. I'm just looking at mine, which in this case is the Commonwealth. There are five ports. In Hull there's one ship. In Plymouth there are 31. One in Portsmouth, 14 in Gibraltar, and eight in Aden. If I click on Gibraltar, then the detailed form brings up all the ships that are in Gibraltar and it lets me look at them individually with the data being updated so I can look at each unit that's there. Again I'm just looking at mine. Besides looking at ports so I could use this to scroll through to the next port which after Gibraltar is Aden and that corresponds to over here the eight ships that are in Aden and I can go to the next port. I can also go out to sea areas. Now down here on the summary there are a lot of sea areas. There's the Eastern Med has one convoy, the Western Med one convoy, the Western Med has two ships and what I'm not seeing there is the fact that there are Axis units present so we're looking at MED it has one Vichy France convoy of three and a Commonwealth convoy of one. I can also turn on submarines, look at the Bay of Biscay, Faroes Gap, Cape St. Vincent. This is actually updating over here, it's just that they're very, most of them are very similar. Cape Basin. Now the screen is only capable of showing eight. There's actually 36 sea areas that have units in them. So what I can do is I can use these buttons here. I'm on Cape Basin. If I go to the next it goes to the Mozambique. And if I click on that it shows me what's in Mozambique. And I can keep on cycling through until I get one. Let's go back. South China Sea has five units. Let's see what those are. So the summary form lets you look at all the sea areas and also all the ports. Notice that restoring the setup did not place all the units on the map. It only placed those units which you get every time. And that means the named ships and the anonymous units like convoys. It does not place land units on the map except for headquarters. Headquarters are named units and they're specified for a setup. But the units that you're looking at here, the ones that are 
not set up using the saved setup are those that are drawn randomly. So you're going to get all the air units. You're going to have to set those up each time you start a new game. And you're going to have to set up the land units. The only way to avoid that is to actually save the game, but then you have the exact same units each time. So if you want to start a new game and have different units, the saved setups are only going to help you for setting up naval units and things like forts and oil points, but it's not going to enable you to set up transports or submarines because these are randomly drawn from a, a group of transports and a group of submarines which have different numbers on them. And that concludes tutorial 7, starting a new game and setting up units.